All right, guys, here we go with my second Tar Amps product for the channel. The first product that we had from Tar Amps was from their Smart lineup. That was the Smart 3 amplifier. And today we have something from their MD lineup, which is the MD 8000.1. This is a one ohm mono full bridge amplifier, also a full range amplifier that I plan on installing in my vehicle. As you guys can see, I got two of them. Why? Some people would ask me, would you buy two 8,000 watt RMS amplifiers? Some of you guys that's been following the channel would know that I do have two very powerful subwoofers installed in my vehicle that I recently uninstalled out of my vehicle because of impedance issues. And because of impedance rods, you will not get the rated amplification of your equipment, meaning that these 8,000 watt amplifiers are not going to give you 8,000 watts because of AC resistance, which will slow down amperage and therefore not allow these amplifiers to give you your full power rating. The MD8000.1 does not come with a remote base knob, which is a downer, but what it does come with is a remote monitoring system here. This is a clip detector, a power detector, and a protect indicator right here in one. This thing connects to the phone style jacks over on the amplifier and it has about a 20 foot cord uh, to enable it to reach the front of your vehicle. Well guys, since this is my first Brazilian amplifier and my first full bridge amplifier, what I'm going to be doing is testing this thing in the lab first. I think it's easier to monitor and therefore make the test environment a lot safer. This is a lot safer than having this thing catch fire right above the gas tank. So in the next few videos, I'm going to be powering this thing up, testing it at different impedance rating and also testing it with different power sources. I currently have an AGM battery connected. I am later on going to be testing the voltage drop across the AGM in comparisons to adding a super or ultra capacitor. And then later on down the road, adding some headway lithium iron phosphate cells to the agenda as well. Okay guys, I got everything wired up. Speaker leads, remote, RCA, and of course the power in the rear. Only thing left to wire up now is the, uh, the monitoring system. The, uh, the MD8000.1 does not come with the base knob. What it does come with is this uh, power on, clip, and protect monitor. Got a long enough cord here where you can stretch this thing from the trunk up to the front of the vehicle. I don't recall whether this is 15 or 20 foot, but it's plenty of cable. I'm just gonna get it right here in front of me and keep it here while I set the gains on this. I have not powered this guy up yet. What I wanna first do is make sure that everything is turned down. But anyway, it's kind of weird that I'm looking at the gain settings here and it actually says the word, it doesn't say gain, it says level, as if it's some type of volume control or something. And it says zero to max. Most gain settings you see have a numeric value on it uh, on both ends, not zero and max. It'll have like a negative two to like a, a six or something like that, but that's a little bit different. Another thing about these Brazilian amps, this is, like I said, this is the third one that I've owned, and um, they feel a bit cheap, man. I mean, the, the internals must be pretty like loose on them because everything that's coming out of here is a bit loose, even the RCAs. You know, non Tiffany, you got these little rotary buttons on here, right here. And I'm, I'm guessing that the potentiometers on there is not, you know, secured to the board with the best weld job. Um, the, um, it has a phone style jack there for the monitor system and the speaker terminals for 8,000 watts. I think that's pretty small. 
uh, in there right now is 10 gauge wire. I'm thinking you can fit up to 8 gauge, but that'll be pushing it. I would really love to see, you know, some bigger wire for this 8,000 watt monster here, but we'll see how it holds up. I do have some marine grade OFC wire coming out of this, and we'll see how it holds up. We'll be checking temperature and stuff like that. Uh, anyway, for wiring, I know you guys already seen, I do have these dual runs of approximately two gauge wire. So you got two runs of those uh, for power and ground. And something is telling me that I may have to break out my um, my ultra capacitor in order to assist with my AGM battery here. In, in case we do get you know something in house to um, put a real load on this thing. So we'll see about that. Right now, uh, now that I got the gains and everything turned down, I'm going to be getting this thing powered up. This is my power switch here. But not before I go over here and actually connect the, um, the negative terminal. This should be interesting because, like I said, first time powering this thing up, so I may get a pretty good spark. And no matter how many times I do this, it makes me, it makes me flinch every single time. Because you got to remember, <clears throat> inside this amplifier are massive ultra capacitors. And these capacitors need to be charged. And when you put them to a power source such as this, it's going to have an inrush of current going through. Those electrons are going to go so far, I mean, going to come so fast out of that post into here because the, the uh, capacitors are going to demand that. And that's why you get your spark. So let me get this pulled up. And there we go. This is what your tire amps will look like. It cycles through on here and on the amplifier. And then the fans come on. I, I, th I don't know. Maybe those fans are always on. That'll get a bit annoying, I guess, if you had your amp close to you like I do. But um, we'll see. Okay, fair warning to guys out there who have heard about these MD series uh, from tire amps. They do not like low voltage. They do not like it. Okay? I was just running a test here. You guys just seen that. And um, I did not have my voltmeter connected. But what I was noticing was the amplifier clip and protect like was like flashing at me. That's why this thing is very handy, man. I'm glad they... I would rather see a bass knob, but I guess tar amps know from, the, from experience that with their product, it's best that you know this stuff is, that is going on other than just being able to control the bass. You have other ways of controlling bass, but not a lot of ways of, of knowing what, whether you're clipping or not. Um, unless you get a bass knob that have that or some type of fancy equipment. They know what's more important. Okay, right, my, my, right now my voltage is 12.2 and the reason for that is because I left the converter off. Right, and I would imagine if somebody just had a low voltage situation. A lot of people don't get high output alts. A lot of people don't get extra batteries. They just go get their favorite YouTubers amplifier right and they go buy it and install it this thing here don't like that i'm gonna show you this i'm gonna hit play test for a little bit i'm gonna show y'all it doesn't like it i didn't touch the volume or anything
It does not like it. As soon as this voltage went below 12, it started flashing orange and red. You don't want to play around with this amplifier in a low voltage situation. Situation. Right now, I'm running all this off of the battery, and the battery is just draining. That's what they do naturally. Uh, in your car, you'll have an adequate enough alternator to supply voltage and keep this thing topped off. Right now, I'm dipping way into my my reserves. That's not good. At rest, this thing's supposed to be sitting uh, well above 12. I can tell you that. This is this is like danger territory. So what I'm going to do is get this thing plugged up and we'll fix all this. So let me put this, let me, I'll get back with y'all. If you are enjoying this video and would like to learn a little bit more about how to simplify car audio, please consider clicking that subscribe button so you don't miss a thing. Now, the converter is doing its job. It's 14 volts now. That's where you want to be sitting at. If you was in a car, you would be sitting at around 14 volts or so. Let's get this thing back going. The AMM1 does have an auto shut off. It's very annoying, but I guess it's a battery because this thing is a battery hog. Please buy recycle, I mean rechargeable batteries when you when you purchase this thing because it eat batteries like nobody's business. All right, now let's try that again. Volume at the same level. 45. Now let's see what it does. Now, I don't want to test this, but it's a lot more voltage going through this thing. It's apparent that the MD8000s.1 do not like high impedances. This amplifier actually clip with anything over 20 ohms. So I think that it is safe to say that running this in a high impedance is not a safe thing to do. What we're going to be doing next is wiring this down to 1 ohm and see how comfortable it is at that impedance rating.
guys can tell running this thing at one ohm is what it likes it likes these low impedances right here it does not like those higher impedances and it cannot take it it tells you it complains about it right here with its own onboard hardware it tells you that it does not like high impedances so if your system has high impedances I would not recommend getting this amplifier until you know how to build an enclosure that can combat the impedance or know how to tune your environment correctly so when I say your environment inside of a vehicle things are going to change like I'm in a lab right now this thing has nothing to load off of so there's no pressure the only pressure being exerted upon this subwoofer is what's building inside of the cabinet but inside of the your car pressure is going to build up differently depending on how you have this thing oriented okay so this environment that you see now is a lab test environment so it's going to even change when I put it inside of the car when I put this inside of the vehicle the impedance is going to do something completely different there is no guarantee that I'll be actually able to get 2500 watts at 2.5 ohms it, I can play the same track get it in my trunk and roll the windows up and it'll be a different number the impedance will and probably the same goes for the wattage it'll do something completely different I could probably get in my car and open the door and it'll be something different close seal it up it'll be something different let up the back seat it'll be something different but what I believe, one thing that is going to be consistent throughout all of this is that this amplifier does not like uh, to stray out, to stray too far outside of its impedance zone. Okay, this is a MD8000.1 and you can wire it all the way down to 1 ohm, which is what I have this subwoofer wired at now, but of course, you're still going to get some rise. That's natural. You're going to get some rise. And the highest wattage that I got out of it just then that's just playing rank, uh, uh, regular music you know it's dynamic you know it's not a test tone but the, the most I got out of it right now was uh, 2500 at 2.5 and the reason why I stopped it is because this thing can put out so much power it had this thing literally jumping out of the out of the box I thought I was gonna break it so I stopped it I don't think it's like warm or anything but um definitely was uh <laughs> pushing it to its limits it's 2000 watts rms and when it exceeded 2000 watts you can start hearing it it, it was really about to do something it's it, i felt like it's it almost sound damaged and i know it's not damaged uh it, it still plays cleanly but just that initial thrust because of so much motor force on this 300 and some ounce magnet it, it sounded like it was trying to jump out of the box but anyway, I approve this thing here as far as raw output. Now the sound quality, it can be better. I mean, let's look at this thing. You have, I, of course, I don't, I don't run any of this bass boost stuff. But the lowest that it can get in a low pass is 90 hertz. That sucks. <laughs> That's the lowest it can go. That's because it's a full range amplifier. The lowest you can, you can cut off is 90 hertz. So you're going to get some feed through here some unwanted feed in order to compact combat that you will have to either set your subwoofer frequencies here at the deck or connect some type of low pass converter on it that can do that me personally I'm going to be running a, a, a um, DSP with this so I'll be able to filter it the way that I like but for guys who don't have DSPs and stuff you know you you may be in a different situation so just know you can get close enough to it right now and it's not a loud harm but I still I feel the subwoofer doing something even as of now 
Um, but I want to play around with this a little bit more. There's no need for me to try to find low impedances and all that stuff. Maybe if you guys request that I'll do a video on how to find your low impedances and stuff like that. It's very simple. Um, but there's no need for me to do that because I got so much power here. Okay? I got so much power on the bench, it doesn't even matter really how this thing rides. As long as this is happy, this this will be okay. But um, anyway... That's it for now, man. Just getting everything set up. I'm going to move forward and uh, go ahead and set the gains on this guy. All right, guys. So there we go. 40 hertz test tone coming right up. And, oh, yeah. So I know that my radio is good up to about 45. That's, when I, that's right when I start clipping it around 45. Really around 50. But I'm going to say around 45 is where I start clipping that. So I know... I can leave it there and be safe. Okay? So I'm going to go ahead and get this going. I still got my satellite speakers connected, so you may hear some things. You know? But uh, just know that it's not... Let me make sure I got this game turned down. It is. And go and pick play. Make sure the volume here is up, because I know I'm clean all the way up. There you go. All right. Let's get this thing going. Alright, so we already at 83 volts. That's crazy. What? I've never seen a graph like that. Guys, I honestly don't know what is going on here. <laughs> I don't know what this thing is doing. I've never seen this the scope do this before. It's it's all over the place. The frequency is not registering. Uh it doesn't matter. I, I first thought maybe I was clipping it here. But then I, I turned the volume on different volumes and it doesn't seem to do <clears throat> anything different. So I even tried to Give it a thousand hertz test tone, right? Test it at a thousand hertz, cause it's full frequency. But it doesn't. It still do this, like it's broken. I don't. I don't understand what's going on with this thing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna disregard the looming. I'm just gonna turn the gains up until this clip light come on. I want to see see if this thing gonna change. In it. it's a forty hertz test tone now. Okay, that's different. But it's funky, man. I ain't never seen that before. Keep going. That's 56 volts. And now the wave is clean. What in the world is going on? Clean wave. And the frequency is correct. That's funky, man. I ain't never seen that happen before. Alright, we had a 94 volts. Oh, they go to clip. It clipped around. Yep. Around 109 or so. Yep. Around 109 is where it starts clipping. That's weird. And the wave look a little funky. So I'm going to bag up to about 100. About 100. Yeah, around there. I'm going to leave it right there. That gives me a little bit of headroom. About 10%. Yeah, because it looked like it was clean all the way up to about 110, but that wave is, man, it's dancing. It was clean to about 110, so I bagged off, right? I bagged off all the way down to about 100. So that gave me about a 10%, you know, give or take, 10% um, safety net. You may as well say a safety net, because Bear V has made a great point. I mean, you don't know what this thing is going to do once it actually does get a load on it so you don't want to be maxing this thing out and then you know you're sending a clip signal with all this power that would be pretty dumb I'm not going to push it nowhere near that with the current setup that I have so this is this is going to be good for me so I'm happy with that I can now say that my games are set safely right now I'm going to go ahead 
and I'm gonna get this. I'm gonna get this. I know my get my uh, my enclosure is tuned to around 35 hertz. Honestly, I think it's 34 hertz, but I'm gonna put it on 35. And I'm gonna see how much power I can put through it. How much of it's rated power? It's 2,000 watts IMS, so it should be able to handle about two stacks. So I'm gonna put it. There we go. Real world power. Voltage is sitting nice at 14.1. So let's get this test on going. This was a brutal test on a subwoofer, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Let's get it turned up. And how you know that this is your tuning frequency to box the cone of the speaker isn't moving see that but it's producing a lot of sound so let's see the impedance rise on it damn it's stuff falling off the shelves guy I can't do this in here I got stuff falling off the shelves up here I'm gonna try it one more time the box is shaking all over the places it's, it's trying to walk its way off the shelf let's try it With 2000, let's catch that. Let's put it on a dyno. See if we can pump about 2500 through it. That's all. I, I ain't gonna kill it. Get about 2500. Woo! Toro showing out. Look at that. I ain't even give it all she got. Guys, this thing is cold. Cold to the touch. Let's check on the subwoofer though. Oh, let me pause it. Let me check on the sub. Cool to the test, baby. Toro taking it. Let's see if we can get that 3,000 out of it. We can beat that. Let's see if we can beat that. Let's get it. Here we go. All right. Let's see if we can beat that. getting no more out of it <clears throat> I wasn't even looking I wasn't even looking at the uh, voltage my dogs are going crazy downstairs I, I take one and what the heck the heck is he doing up there they're going crazy downstairs but let me I'm gonna try it one more time I hope this thing don't walk itself off this table let's try it one more That's all I'm getting out of it for now. I don't want to clip it. I don't want to clip the signal. Look like that's all I'm able to get out of it right now. I'm going to give it one more and then I'll be done with it. And my wife going to come up here acting crazy in a minute. <laughs> here we go. Almost 3,000 out of it. And I don't even smell it, guys. I don't smell it. It ain't burning. Amplifier is cold to the touch. This thing can put out some power, boy. I can't wait to get some real speakers on it where I can turn it up like I want to. I can't turn it up like I want to. But you best believe dynamically it's going to do a lot better than that. Dino, baby. One more again. 35 hertz. Clip. I took it all the way up to clipping, guys. We're getting 3,000 at 3.3 ohms of impedance. The clipping that you see here was definitely due to low voltage. I got to get some more power on the bench. Yep, time to break out the ultra capacitor by Ioxys. I ain't even mad. I got two of these. You did? <laughs> I got I got two of these puppies. 
So that means one of them will run two VXFs like it's nothing. Those are Scardios, by the way. Scardio VXF 12s. Man, I'm excited about this, guys. This thing is worth it. I know it can do a lot more. I know it can. Please join me in the next video where we connect the UC31 Ultra Capacitor by Ioxys. This is an excess power product. Will adding 375 farads be enough to sustain this power hungry amplifier? We'll have to see in the next video. Thanks for visiting the channel to help you simplify car audio. It's the Budget Bass here and I'm out.